can you actually go into what those five exercises are just for people that yeah. are listening to the audio only yeah so the five movements are basically covering um and again i got these from initially from philip chubb the mind mover who you should definitely check out as well because plug him yeah plug him. <laughs> inspired the whole the whole philosophy um planche push up so the idea is that you've got horizontal it's very basic like exercise science horizontal push and pull vertical push and pull and then a squat and you load the squat through full range of motion like with everything else but that fundamentally changes it because it becomes a hip hinge and a knee extension which normal squats don't do so this is like a squat and a deadlift mm. which are the two lower body basics that people cover so by doing that um the way that we train each so by doing that we're covering the whole body basically um the movements we use to achieve them are a planche push building up to a planche push up or like a full straddle planche um, a front lever row building up to like a front lever one arm chin up a handstand push up and then the squat is like weighted single leg squat and my sort of arbitrary goal for that is 75 percent of body weight so for me building up to a 60 kilo loaded single leg squat. five basic strength moves you do each of them yeah. once a week for how long well they each take a couple minutes it's just one set of each okay Ma maybe each of those go sets goes for like three minutes max five minutes max and then by the time you've done them all, it's probably like under 25 minutes worth of actual strength work. Mm. And then if you're including rest time, that's why I say like 40 minutes a week is pretty conservative. It's taken many years to condense this down into the little amount that we're doing. Yeah. And it took a lot of testing and like a lot of nervousness being like, uh, I feel like if we do less, we're going to make less gains. Yeah. That's how everyone feels and that's why everyone's so skeptical about this method. Yeah. But guess what happened when we tested it is training got better, training got more fun, we made faster progress. Definitely didn't lose any gains okay. um, because I'm now my strongest and leanest by far ever and it's been on doing progressively less and less work per week. So what we do is go and take that small section of that last rep and start there and continue working there by scaling the difficulty of the movement as we fatigue so that we're basically matching the exact difficulty of the movement throughout each rep to exactly our maximum potential strength at that point in the rep. Okay. We only do that. The key to all the training is you force every single negative. So okay. every lowering portion is a forced eccentric. So you're not giving it up and lowering. You're like still trying to failure pull. all the way to the bottom of every single rep that you Okay, do. got you. And doing this, like when you give it a try in a second, you'll feel you need to take more weight on your feet. Keep your, <laughs> <Got hips up>. <laughs> <laughs> keep, you, <laughs> you know, keep your hips up. You just walk your feet in closer to the rings. <sighs> Yeah. You can really feel that in like the upper chest. Yeah, yeah, you will. Especially. Yeah. So like the whole point with this is you don't have to hold back. You don't have to wait till you're ready. You start as hard as freaking possible yeah. at every point in time. And that's how you progress. So you just test things. You just say, can I do this yet? Can I do this yet? Can and that okay. is that hunger to like test the next thing and try and be at the next level and watching your mates get stronger as well and being mm. like, I want to like get this next movement. That's exactly the thing that you're chasing is that just progressive increase makes a good life like yeah. how do you have high well-being because that's basically what i wanted i was like i just mm. want to be really happy and have a fun time um and then so i guess you can break it down into these basic you asked before like what are those things that you need what drives us it's like well there's not that much but you've got to get them right yeah. <laughs> um, you know, relationships meaningful work physical health are the basics that you look at. So I just recorded an episode a few days ago with Jack and Jack's incredibly interesting because his way of looking at exercise is completely different to anything I've ever seen before. Most people say that the more volume you do and the higher intensity you do is better. And Jack's approach or Jack's thing that he sells himself on is 40 minutes per week is enough to really grow strength and really grow muscle. And it's better that I leave it to him to properly explain. But the exercises he does, he has five core movements and he moves through them and that's all he needs. Five minutes a day for five days of the week, 40 minutes total. Pretty crazy. Anyways, um, the longer version of this will be on YouTube um, and I'll actually show you what that workout looks like. But for those listening to audio only, this episode will be on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. With all of these, um, feedback is very much appreciated as well as a follow and sharing it with your friends if you find it interesting. At the end of the episode, I'll link Jack's social medias as well so you can have a look and 
see what you think of them. Um, yeah, they're really interesting person to follow, and I think you'll love this conversation. So, I want to get into just like the meat and bones of it. Yeah. So the thing that you say online and what I've heard about your program is you can get an incredible physique in less than forty minutes. Can you explain that for me? Yeah. So basically, this is a product of a lot of years of evolution of. Um, I guess, pursuit of strength and a good looking physique and trying to simplify these things. Cause I didn't come from the fitness world at all. I was much more interested in functional stuff um, growing up like late high school onwards. So I just wanted to like be able to do a lot of things, but obviously I wanted to look good as well. Um, and then, so yeah. And then in like, so I lifted weights and did all like classic things. Cause I realized, okay, I needed to resistance train, build strength, um, get lean. And then that's like sort of the app, the way to get, um, strong, good looking physique, which is like all the things I ended up realizing that I wanted on a, on a fundamental level. Yeah. And then in college, uh, I mean, it's like, I was constantly, I was very into this stuff. I was like very into Edo Portal and like the whole movement culture stuff in the early days. Cause I thought that was really cool. Edo like, Portal, can you explain that? He's a bloke, he's an Israeli bloke who's like, I uh, wasn't sure if you're familiar with him. He's like, um, he basically started this whole thing about movement as a practice and as a pursuit rather than the just aesthetics chasing like you know traditional bodybuilding and stuff he, he was like from a lot of capoeira background you know the brazilian dance martial art anyway he brought all these ideas of gymnastics and strength training and capoeira and dance and acrobatics and all these things together and he's like this rift cool israeli dude um who seems to have it all right he's like flipping around on beaches and like doing all this mad stuff like the handstand push-ups and the yeah. push-ups i was showing you and i was like whoa like this was probably like late high school i was like that is so cool and I went in on that. So he was a big inspiration. Got me into like gymnastic strength training and all that sort of stuff. Because I thought like this is way cooler. Being able to move your body and being really functional and looking good. That's way cooler than just like chasing a pump at a gym and being into bodybuilding stuff. Because mm. I was never drawn to that. I like I, yeah, wanted to be, you know, lean and like look good and stuff. But I was never like, oh, I want to like dedicate myself to being a gym slave. Like I want that sort of as a byproduct of becoming a better mover okay right? so that's why Edo's philosophy really resonated with me and that's why i went down that pursuit of um, functional body weight gymnastic strength training and all that stuff so then like that started this whole um endeavor of research and going down the rabbit hole and that stuff throughout like from i guess my gap year probably end of high school when i'd just done a year or two of strength training i was like already i was bored with increasing my weights and i was like i want to like get something out of this more than just you know slaving way to build some muscle so i was like sort of went down that track and then in college so i was very much into that by the time i was at college i was this dreadlocked kid who was doing his handstands in the courtyard i'm um, just coming off my gap year traveling asia and i was like into all this weird movement stuff and um, i was doing that in the gym like doing my front lever rows in the, in the college <laughs> gym and stuff and i was big into it i was like dedicated and i was like you know i'm gonna like smash this in. but i was still like early and didn't really know what i was doing and then um i guess college then drew me into a lifestyle of also then wanting to like go and drink and party and and socialize and do the things that a normal 20 year old wants to do when they move cities to go to uni so then i had this thing of like well i'm not just gonna and i had uni to do as well and i was like i'm not just gonna like slave away for nothing what having all those other priorities then made me do was like what am i actually it made me think what am i actually getting out of this time and effort in gym and nutrition and like what like, what am I actually, like, what's getting me results? Mm. What do I need to keep doing at a bare minimum to keep that chuffing along while I go and enjoy my life, right? Because I was okay. like, I've done this for like three, four years. Uh, yeah, like three, two, two, three years by the time I was at college. I was like, I'm not going to like just keep flitting away time. If I'm not, you know, jacked now, then what is more of this same stuff going to get me? Mm. Like, there's obviously like let's cut back basically mm. and i'm really grateful well i think that's just all how things are always going to go but i'm glad that i had this mindset of like i'm going to have my cake and eat it too like i'm going to go and live life and i'm going to just keep getting keep doing the bare essentials of what's getting the results mm. so fast forward basically what i realized was like over time realized how much i was doing at the gym and stuff was wasting time and with nutrition and all efforts and so eventually I like just started focusing more on increasing my strength, pushing my strength, cutting back all the workouts to less, mm. making sure they were counting. Cause I was like just intuitively aware of how much of the time in the gym was just like 
weeded away and unnecessary. Mm. So I just started like being like, okay, I'm actually going to get strong on these movements. Like I realized that like, if I want to like be bigger, like I may as well be getting a result, like bigger, I just need to be stronger on these basic compound lifts. Let's start working on that. Um, diets, like just, let's just get protein in and let that take care of itself. Uh, not worry about the rest. And doing that, I then sort of locked in from say 2018, second year of uni to, well, from then on and gained like a lot of muscle mass and uh, a lot of strength simple and while having a lot more fun than I was when I was like trying to go harder at it. So what were these basic movements you were doing at that time to put in less effort, but also receive more results? So it was, it was very basic things. I mean, I was still using weights. I still a lot of, I was using the rings. I was using weights. It was, it was all like, to me, it didn't really matter, but it was basic compound movements as in like rows, bench presses, um, overhead presses so less accessories you're just focusing yeah, on the yeah, pure yeah. basics I was pushing doing, that strength as pretty much, much never doing isolation i was just like do it cutting back doing less sets less movements mm-hmm. focusing on those and focusing on pushing them progress with them yeah mm-hmm. and fast forward to today we had then the period of covid in 2020 2021 where we couldn't use the gym anymore so i was like well i've got to make these body weight versions of these things work even better so then I sort of started figuring, I found Mindful Mover, who I mentioned before, who was doing like these, just these five movements only mm. and doing them always at max intensity. I was like, okay, let's leverage and just like, this makes sense to me based on all my experience. Let's just use max intensity stuff. And then that went from just doing the five movements to using the max intensity, doing them even less as in cutting back from doing like three workouts a week to each movement once, cutting back from three sets to each movement, eventually doing one set um, mm. in the last few years. And to the point now where like it's just evolved and it's probably only been the last year or year and a half, maybe two years that we've really had this like one set once a week, like 40, literally 40 minutes, like less than 40 minutes, just these five movements. And you've been in less than 40 minutes a week. Yeah, per week total training time. And yeah, you know, pushing results as fast as I ever have. Um, to most people listening that will seem absolutely obscene because everything they've ever been fed in terms of like fitness and strength and aesthetics has been told to be going to the gym for like an hour or two so i want to jump into like how how do you achieve that max intensity every session yeah so the idea is that like this was only i guess this only became possible by cutting down to just focusing on body weight work because the strength like with weights it's impossible it's pretty much impossible to do this so the idea is that most of your reps, and this is what we're talking about at the park, most of your reps when you're doing a normal set of, say, bench press, a sub-maximal intensity because you've got to keep... you As you train, you fatigue. So if you're going to be able to do multiple reps, you have to, by definition, be lower than your 100% of your max mm. intensity. And by the same token, when you do get to max effort on a rep, only some of that's going to be able to be max rep like effort because throughout range of motion you have like a strength curve Mm. where different parts of the movement are at different levels of relative difficulty Mm. there's only going to be a small small section of that last rep you bench press when you are almost failing that's truly at failure so what Mm. we do is go and take that small section of that last rep and start there and continue working there by scaling the difficulty of the movement as we fatigue so that we're basically matching the exact difficulty of the movement throughout each rep to exactly our maximum potential strength at that point in the rep okay we only do that so you're just talking the hardest part so say for example someone's on a normal bench press you're taking those final three reps and then even extending that rep that they would normally fail yeah. and working within that failure within a body weight movement right exactly from the outset so we're taking the the hardest most close like the at, the bit that's at failure on the last last rep where you cannot get another rep we're taking that portion of that rep where it's like almost stopping and then we're just taking that from the start and continuing with it until we're tired. How does that translate in terms of muscle growth? Because from what I understand, muscle grows through hypertrophy. So that intensity, is that where hypertrophy gains are made? Yeah, so like with this, I just figure that there can be as much science literature out there as whatever and it's not really gonna like what matters is testing things and seeing what gets results there's no Mm. point waiting for science because it's difficult to run actual like controlled tests on these things and no one's doing it for like say our 
scaled intensity body weight training mm. but what research says and so yeah long story short we've we've tried this i've then tested it on every single person who i've then coached so there's me and a few students who are like more advanced there's people who are fresh beginners and it works amazingly well as logic would suggest once you understand this and have tested it a bit it works really well that's all the evidence i need but if you look at like the science of things what they say is that mechanical tension meaning uh, is like the same mechanical tension is the most important thing for hypertrophy. So that is working like the relative difficulty, the relative uh, amount of force that you're exerting compared to what your muscles are capable of exerting. Okay, is the most important thing. So what we're doing is uh, like maxing out mechanical tension for the whole time we're training, and then listening to our body signals to tell us when to stop. So it is logical based on you know strength and conditioning research that this would work mm. because what everyone says is that you basically need to be using your muscles at failure or as close to as possible. Um, and then time doing that is what elicits this hypertrophy response. Okay. So it's quite like when you understand strength training, uh, it makes a lot of sense, but most people, because they hear my message and think, Oh, like 40 minutes a week's not enough. It's like, okay, but like, what do you mean by 40 minutes a week? And most people have no concept of like taking that cream of the crop really potent, so like a uh, stimulus that you get from good training and then just like extending that and cutting out everything else. Yeah. Like, so it's not just 40 minutes a week of normal training. Mm. It's like, it's the same as, you know, an extensive strength training routine every week, multiple sessions, multiple hours that gets this same amount of mechanical tension in those work. Okay. But we've cut pretty much all the fat. That's awesome. Like, do you find what's the hardest thing to overcome in terms of people's prejudices? Is it just what they've been fed before in terms of what they've been told? Yeah, it's like people, I think the what I love about starting to create more content and write in depth more about these ideas is that people, when they get into it and, and understand what you're saying, really resonate with it. Because people are like, people have this intuition. The, the thing that I like to say is that um, the truth is often exactly what you'd hoped it would be because we have often this intuition that things could be better, but we don't quite know how to like align reality with that intuition, intuitive feeling that we have. Right. Mm. So people often think, Oh, I feel like I, people have this resistance to exercise and training and stuff, but they don't know like how to find what's good out of all that and leave the rest so that the resistance disappears. So then when people read your stuff and they're like, Oh my God, like this is what I was missing. The, all this crap is what I wasn't liking. Mm. This makes a lot of sense. People really resonate with that message. But I think it's... So when, so when people get their heads around the concept, I think ever, like uh, many, many, many people really understand it and it makes sense. But before getting to that point, if people just take the surface level and they say, that's the when I get like the hate or whatever, the, the stuff on online where people are like, this is rubbish, this can't work and stuff and like you don't understand the science behind this and like quoting articles and stuff. Like just, <laughs> you haven't actually watched a single training video you don't understand like you haven't put the time into understanding yeah. how we're achieving this because all the things that people are coming back and saying it's like well that aligns with what i've said if you you know mm. the explanation we've just had about mechanical tension and stuff it all it all aligns. so it's people basically not taking the time to reconsider those yeah those frameworks that are already there from all the conditioning of health and fitness mm. world do you think people will become like do you reckon this will become a movement in the coming <laughs> years where people are looking at this as like an actual viable solution because this is right on the fringe mm. of diet and exercise right now yeah i think so and i'd like to play a part in promoting that because i think people get so, well i know the reason the thing the reason i was motivated to like do this as a business properly like just over a year ago when I finished up uni was because I was like, this is, I'm sitting on a gold mine here. Like I have a system that has made my life so good mm. and it's just absurd because no one even believes me when I tell them about it. Like why shouldn't I go and promote this to more people, mm. and, you know, make a business out of it, but also just like have the chance to spread the message to more people. Cause I can look around and I'm like so many, so many people wasting effort at the gym, you know, in the kitchen, like not being happy with themselves when they could just have it. I could just have it here. I could just, yeah, you know, just give it, feed it to them. It's like 40 minutes a week and eat what you want <laughs> and get the results. So um, I think people, I think this is going to become more popular, this minimalist approach to fitness, because I don't mm -hmm. think people want to be in the gym slaving away that much. A lot of people don't. And people obviously don't want to be giving up their social lives to try and get leaner. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's just this simpler approach that takes less time and effort, I think 
Yeah. Aside, and, aside from that time saved, yeah. what other benefits do you see towards this? Like you said, you mentioned quite a few times that how it's very like it's very functional mm. so how does that cross pollinate to other things like you do surfing and stuff how how mm. does that play into other parts of your life yeah the beauty of this like what i love about strength training is that if you want to look good you have to be strong and the f- easiest fastest way to get strong as a natural athlete is to well the easiest fastest way to build up that muscle is just to have a few big compound movements that you get really strong at because like the but what I said at the start about like I, I wanted the aesthetics to be a byproduct of being a better mover, it's unavoidable, right? Mm. Like if you get strong enough, you just have muscle mass that looks great, and so the like the functional sort of strength, becoming a really strong human being that can then go and apply that strength to anything else, like that happens if you get up skill enough on these movements, right? So like I love that all the goals are one and the same. It's like to build to build the muscle. Even if you just want it to look good, you're gonna to have to get stupidly strong. And mm. then you've got that strength. You can go now play basketball or go play whatever sport you're into, go surf, go do whatever. You're gonna be way better at it because especially if you get lean as well, you've now you're now light, your relative strength is through the roof compared to the average person. Mm. You can run faster, jump higher, you can paddle longer. Everything becomes easier because you're a stronger person. Mm. So it's a pretty cool like there's a lot of benefits to just one simple pursuit. How do these five movements play into cardio as well? Because that's something I'm curious about for people that want to maybe mm. run marathons. That's an extreme example. But does this help with that or would you need to do cardio on the side? Um, yeah, I'm not an expert on like improving cardio because it just falls out completely outside of my interests. Okay. But um, like certainly being leaner helps and obviously as i said it's easy to get lean if you've got muscle mass to you know, replace mm. body fat with um so it doesn't definitely doesn't hurt also having more strength means that any movements like a relatively lower percentage of your maximum effort which means it's easier for your body mm. so i think i've only seen benefits from strength um ben patrick says strength is never weakness weakness is never a strength I think that is true. Repeat that for me. Strength is never a weakness. Okay. Like weakness is never a strength. You want to be stronger. Yeah. You yeah. want mobility, like longevity, reduced atrophy into aging, higher um, bone density, you know, higher resting metabolic rate, um, lower body fat, all these things, like just more functional ability to like more speed, you know, more agility. Mm-hmm. Strength is going to get you all those things. And it's not that complex to build, right? I use five moves to do it. Mm-hmm. So I think even if people have other interests like cardio focused pursuits, this isn't like the route to get there. Like you need to train your car, like for your marathon, if you want to get better at running marathons, but this is not going to hurt. And the beauty of taking a minimalist approach to strength building is that you have so much time and energy to go and spend on your other fitness pursuits. Okay. Because we're only spending 40 minutes. We're minimizing the impact. We're just trying to get a result with as small a stimulus as possible or as, intensest and stimulus as possible there's plenty of time in the week to go and practice your running and yeah run. running or surfing or jujitsu or yeah. anything which, else which can be much more you know fruitful pursuits because you're just wasting less time getting this one thing it's done so now you can go do what you want to do have you found there's a difference in your energy in comparison to when you were doing those long ones because i can imagine obviously the body takes longer to recover if you're sitting fatiguing it for over an hour hour and a half mm. in the gym do you find yourself just like more energy and more mobility at the start of the day it's hard to tell because it's been such a slow evolution into this mm. um it'd be interesting to see someone come straight off a big high intensity bodybuilding routine into this and see what the results are like my one thing that's been better is injury because it's so much lower when you're not constantly stressing your joints as much because when you're getting a max you're getting when we're doing this style of training you're getting a signal sent to your muscles to grow really quickly but there's not that much there's not this prolonged uh, strain on your joints and all your connective tissue okay so the, this is a bit of a not answering your question but injury has gone down a lot in terms of energy um i i would say this is a pretty good approach that but yeah it'd be hard to yeah hard to hard test to run yeah okay but uh, there is definitely like you're, you're not pushing over training because the whole thing is you're waiting as long as you need to train again yeah. you're only doing the amount that your body wants to do when you do train again so you you avoid like overtraining, which is where people run into a lot of this like fatigue and stuff with overtraining. you speak about 
what your body wants to do and kind of leaning into that intuition how does that translate in your actual workouts do you so you say five minutes at a time but like how many exercises does that equate to just until your body can't do anymore what what's that look like exercises. yeah reps of the exercises and can you actually go into what those five exercises are just for people that yeah. are listening to the audio only yeah so the five movements are basically covering um and again i got these from initially from philip chubb the mindful mover who definitely check out as well because plug him yeah plug him. <laughs> inspired the whole the whole philosophy um planche push-up so the idea is that you've got horizontal it's very basic like exercise science horizontal push and pull vertical push and pull and then a squat and you load the squat through full range of motion like with everything else but that fundamentally changes it because it becomes a hip hinge and a knee extension which normal squats don't do so this is like a squat and a deadlift mm. which are the two lower body basics that people cover so by doing that, um, the way that we train each, so by doing that, we're covering the whole body basically. Um, the movements we use to achieve them are a planche push, building up to a planche push up or like a full straddle planche, um, a front lever row building up to like a front lever, one arm chin up, a handstand push up, and then the squat is like weighted single leg squat. And my sort of arbitrary goal for that is seventy five percent of body weight. So for me, building up to a 60 kilo loaded single leg squat. Oh, uh, okay. So 75% of your body weight on loaded on your body. back. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Well, With you're one doing leg, that. yeah. And where are you at in that? I'm just I've uh, got 50% body weight pretty comfortably. And then, yeah, hacking away towards the end. And the point is, yeah, I'm not at any of these goals. Yeah, I have got each of them to a shoddy degree i watched now. you plan or yeah. not plan i watched you straddle plans today yeah. i watched you front lever yeah, today yeah. so um no I, and i have got one option on each side and a handstand push up but this is only in the last couple months the mm. point is but you know i've unlocked them unlocked them in the last few months and the point of that is like i'm now sort of you know well i'm beyond what i ever really wanted to get in terms of like muscle mass and aesthetics out of, out of this training and the point is that like these goals are all achievable for most able-bodied people mm -hmm. um and you know get there you're going to be like you have to have that much muscle and be that lean so you get to them you're sorted in terms of having a great rig one thing i'm curious of what you've looked into is whether the endorphin release is the same with this as it is with doing all these very heavy compound movements and going for the going to the gym for an hour because that's something like Huberman and stuff speaks about a lot oh yeah as when you go to the gym you get this massive release of endorphins and that's because you're training and i don't know whether that's for a long time or that's because yeah. of those specific movements at that like high intensity yeah we get pretty good endorphin rush from this i yeah. love training <laughs> all of us love training and the beauty of it is as well because you're listening to that body signal and being stopping when you want to mm. i feel like well, to me, it feels the same without the downside of having to have the negative emotion that you push through. Mm. So, yeah, for, for all of us, I think it's like it's awesome. And, and training is something we look forward to every single time we do it because by definition, we're doing the amount we want to do. We're always pushing progress. So there's that dopamine rush of like continually like progressing towards our goals. Um, so in my experience... It's equivalent. As I said before, like if you need more exercise, like I need exercise more still. Like I, walking is one of the most important things to me outside of training. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it's walking. It doesn't have to be intense. I surf and play basketball and tennis and stuff as well, but just casually when I want to. But I think there's more than just strength training that you can get your endorphins from. And mm -hmm. as I said before, having the structure that's minimal, like what I have to do each week to make, make progress is just so small but then for your well-being, there's other things you can do that aren't just lifting and it doesn't have to be in the gym mm. to make you feel good. You can just literally walk out your front door. <laughs> <laughs> easy easy to do in Australia, but back in Scotland, it's hard to walk out your front door without like three coats on and a yeah, fucking yeah. bully hat. Outside of the actual like physical aspect of it what else do you focus on in terms of like your training program do you look at diet do you look at i want to hear your thoughts on supplements and stuff as well where yeah. do you lie with all that yeah so the other thing like with people that i coach particularly is like getting just getting lean um and i try and take a really simple approach to that it's just like because it all just comes down to calorie target so i just help people um basically eat enough while being in a deficit to 
lose weight to a point that they're happy with mm. and then training pretty much uh like fueling training from then just comes from listening to your appetite again i think you don't really need to overcomplicate things that much the only thing i do b- both during like periods where you're trying to lose fat and normal periods is trying to hit a protein target because i have mm. found that to really help just feeling good post as in like as you're training um and feeling recovery and gains so that's as complex as i make nutrition um, for myself and with people is just like hit a protein target daily like you know in routine and do then, you get bad calories and good calories because like a right. bowl of green beans isn't going to yeah, be the yeah. same as like a donut <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so the basic basic high level is that calories and protein uh, in terms of getting results people given those like constraints will mm. fi- soon figure out every time that getting those calories from mainly from whole foods is going to be the best experience mm. because once you're then once you're limited in like you've got a target to hit you pretty quickly find that, that target's a lot more fun to hit if it's coming from like you know animal proteins and vegetables and like rice and potatoes as opposed to just chocolate and donuts mm. and a protein shake but the point is there's flexibility you can do what you want and still get results yeah i obviously base my diet on whole foods because it's just so much more fun and i feel mm. so much better so it's mainly make my diets basically like red meat veggies potatoes and rice um and like then it's just do you ever have an ice cream now and then yeah yeah, yeah. And, then, and then it's like just whatever i want to eat on top of that um love chocolate we eat dessert at our house every day so <laughs> there's a lot of ice cream and chocolate but yeah that balance is pretty easy to find once you like lock in a basic diet that works it hits yeah. those basic targets um and so i try and just keep things simple and enjoyable and mm. a diet that's like nice and eat and that you want to eat every single day is the best because you'll keep doing that i love the a lot of what you say in terms of what you've just said the diet there and in terms of the exercise itself is that you're following the intuition you're following what works for you and just kind of listening to your body um and i think that's something i noticed especially over lockdown everyone had the apple watch and they were tracking ten thousand steps a day and i was like it's such an arbitrary number to follow it seems so daft have you found that like intuition to help in other parts of your life whether that be business or relationships or anything you've found that to like kind of cross pollinate yeah 100 percent. and this is what like i was saying with my whole because my background in psychology i did my honors uh mm. at uni in psych because i find human behavior so interesting and this is sort of i came back to do this business with fitness because i was coaching it the whole time and this is like this is i guess an application of these ideas about intuition and emotional signaling and stuff that's very tangible and you can get a very clear result with it so it's like, oh, I can teach you how to, you know, get ripped, basically get strong, lean by like applying these thing, these basic mm. things. But yeah, but those ideas are ideas that I've sort of like been interested in, in every field of life. Um, mm. So yeah, I think that's, it's something that like fitness is where I've sort of figured out some very clear outcomes with these things, but I'm still in the process of like human psychology is quite complex thing yeah nothing i like more than trying to like understand it in my own life which is what sucked me down that rabbit hole of like reading about it in my gap year i started reading non-fiction books and was fascinated by like um you know happiness and well-being and uh, motivation and you know what what drives our behavior Mm. and that's like for me the most interesting topic ever so like yeah you see some pretty pretty um actionable applications within fitness but it's it's my interest now going forward in you know in business and in, in relationships in life just like what um there's like a, a million things we could talk about but like it's just all like basically what drives us but how i, I, I want to stick on that so you talk about like what drives us as humans yeah from your experience and from your knowledge of books yeah. what do you think it is is it like a need for relationships for love for attention like what is it we're actually vying yeah. for so there's a there's a bunch of things and it's the balance of that that we should like achieving the balance of that is where well-being and thr- fl- thriving flourishing is found mm. right so i guess you've got um the idea that i apply with fitness is that your your body your brain if you look, think about it evolutionary you're designed to Mo- mo- emotions are like your body's ways of signaling pushing behavior in certain directions so you mm-hmm. but you're going to get hungry your body's going to give you drive to go eat food 
you get horny, your body's going to drive you to go find a mate. You mm. get like thirsty, you're going to find water. Mm. And there's way this, like, that's the basic animalistic version, but humans are so like complex. Our prefrontal cortexes are so developed that we've got like a lot of layers on, upon layers of these of nuances with these things. And it's quite hard in modern day living to figure out sometimes like what are these emotions telling me to do? Mm. And like, and this is like why I think psych is so fascinating because we've got like a mental health amp- epidemic in the, the modern westernized Western world um, or the whole modernized world, right? Yeah. Even though we've got access to so many resources and stuff. And so there's all these, basically what I'm so interested in is these mismatches between like how we're feeling and what, our body's trying to tell us to do and not really knowing what to do in response to those signals. Okay. So one example of applying this to fitness is with the training stuff being like, Oh, I don't want to do all this work, but your body's trying to tell you, Hey, like we don't need to do this much training, mm. do a lot less and be getting results. And there's this intuition, intuitive understanding of that, but people don't get it because mm. they haven't been given a model that works until, you know, for, say I come and bring this one and say, well, look, you could just do this tiny amount and be getting all the same results. Mm. And then all of a sudden you've solved this mismatch, this like discordance between that's causing these emotional feelings of resistance. Yeah, so they're, they're wanting to get to that stage where they're strong and they look good aesthetically, but it doesn't make sense for them to do that much. And yeah. they just can never make that. Yes, and they don't know why do don't I want to do all this training? Why am I finding it so hard every week to get up and do all this training? It's because like you, you're at some intuitive level, you realize or unconsciously you realize that that's not productive and there's better uses of all that time and energy. And the way that your body pushes you off doing it because you haven't like logically figured it out is to be like, make that training aversive. And mm. You don't want to do it. And then people are like, I can't, my goal is there. And I see <laughs> this is the way of getting there, but I don't want to do it. And I can't sustain it. Mm. I must be useless. It's like, no, <laughs> you're smart. You're figuring out un- unconsciously that you shouldn't be doing all that work. And it's not yeah. a good use of your time because there's other things, right? This is, comes back to that whole, there's a lot of goals with, mm. with this psychology. There's other things you should be spending that time on, like your career, like your relationships, and so putting all this time into training, it's like, no, <laughs> but you can't, like people haven't yet figured out in that situation that, oh, I can still get to that result, but there's a, there's a less time intensive way and doing that will make me feel good. And you're, you're trying to reach these people through social media, through like your online content and stuff. How have you found that? Because that is, is that recent thing. Now you've got the Instagram page, you've got a TikTok, I'm right and mm-hmm. saying, You've now got the website, you've got a coaching program that works through there. How have you found that process of learning all this like content production? Yeah, it's taken time and it's still evolving. Mm. Um, I think, as I said before, I've just found that doing it and trying to find a process that you can just lock into that makes sense for you has been the real thing that's helped me in the last six months because there's a bit of overwhelm when you start an online business and you're trying to like do all these things and you're trying to do everything right. Mm. Um, what's helped me is just decide well, what's sustainable like with the i try often i look at training and nutrition i think how can i apply these like the things i've learned here that principle can they map to business can they map to other things and so i'm trying now to just like minimize and it take the thing is with this like it's easy for me to sit back and say this with fitness because i've spent seven eight years testing and and figuring out what doesn't work Mm. i think so much of mastery is like going through all this like um, wasted effort and realizing what doesn't matter so that you can re- refine back your process to the essentials. Mm. And so with business, it's been a lot of that. It's been a lot of like flitting time away on certain things and realizing they're not important and slowly figuring out what I need to do consistently to drive results. So now it's like I'm doing a weekly newsletter. I'm doing socials, trying to be consistent mm. with that and then just coaching and then soon there'll be um, ads running and trying to get more clients on board. But it's just been this iterative process of like doing stuff for a while, seeing what's too frustrating, seeing what my emotions like being like, okay, this is not useful. Uh, And then cutting back and just trying to, yeah, trying to figure out my own process bit by bit. What's been like your biggest win so far, like your most viral piece of content? Like have you found anything that really resonated with people? Yeah, so right before I went away on holiday in summer, I like posted a TikTok 
like the day before I headed off for four weeks mm. of coastal travel and it got more views than anything else I've ever posted, like significantly. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, if we're talking numbers, how much? Like uh, just 190,000. Damn. <laughs> okay. And, um, but the point is I had comments blowing up and so I was on the coast, like trying to enjoy my time off and I was like <laughs> happy that I've got all this thing, but I was like trying to, and trying to respond to everyone, but I was like, yeah. oh, it's the worst time ever. But I was glad that people, were, people obviously resonating with it. That was a video on, how I build muscle in minutes, I think. Mm. Video on like how that minimalist approach can work. Um, so that did well. But like, again, I just see this process. It's like, you're happy when they go off, but it's like, next video. Got to go on to the next one. Got to keep improving. Yeah, got to keep getting better <laughs> yeah. every second. My curiosity is leading me to the point where I'm thinking, where do you want to lead this in five years time? And from our conversation, you might not know as much because you said it's an mm. iterative process and yeah. that's going to change over time. Yeah. But do you have a utopia of like what you would want this business to be and how you'd want to teach people? Yeah. So like I'm doing the coaching at the moment, um, which is sort of, you know, um, a bit more time intensive, a bit more like group, like do it, like getting in the trenches. Cause I want to make sure that, now it's still about learning how to get people these results and make sure that they're getting them. Mm. Uh, and I want people to get as much out of what I'm like sharing as possible because I know how well it works when it's done properly. Mm. Long term, I'd like to be able to get it out to more people. So maybe productize this, um, this program that we've got going and, and just make it more accessible. But my big vision is like the content side of things and, and, have, and growing an audience talking about applications of these. Ideas. I feel like I'm still starting to scratch the surface on all the stuff that I'm so interested in with Sark and all the ways these things can be applied to like create tangible changes in people's lives. As I said, fitness is like one first really high leverage application. But I know I can see how much there is and I'm still learning as I go. So I think long term, my vision is to have just to build an audience and, and be sharing this, these sort of messages with people through my newsletter and blog and through content online in a way that gets to people and impacts them. And like, I've had so many epiphanies through being lucky enough to be able to study psych and, and have great support with my parents and friends and build a life that I am stoked on. I've had so many epiphanies along the way of just inefficiencies in the ways I think and behave that I go, holy shit, like, if I could give that to people, just that realization, just that learning, that would be so valuable. Mm. And so long-term with my business stuff, I'd, I'd like to be producing content consistently that can, you know, for some people, some of the time be having those like light switch. That's moments. why that's not working. That's why that is yeah, working. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's like, why oh this my God, that. it's just an inefficiency. I don't have to have this like um, limit on my thinking and behavior that mm. this is unnecessary and allow help people like, offload those things and find better ways of running themselves in their lives what it strikes me as is like you're very much a person that likes to test things for himself and it reminds me of you've heard of tim ferris before yeah. he always calls himself the human guinea pig because yeah. he'll go out and try things for himself um and he's obviously got a book called the four hour work week and then the four hour body as well so he, yeah, yeah. he goes very much on like maximizing this efficiency yeah. and putting anything else like on the output side of things is there anything else you've tried outside of the fitness thing where you've kind of like maybe like meditation or something like that where you've tried something new and it's had those eureka moments? Because you mentioned your exploration to psychology. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm curious about those eureka moments. Um, yeah, the eureka moments. Like I said that um, some of those have been, one was like seeing Edo Portal online and, and delving into that whole, like this whole different approach to, I think what I liked about him was that it was this anti-fitness thing. It wasn't like the traditional approach to all this stuff. It was another option. It was like, oh, mm. maybe we can just like focus on something else, focus on the functionality of the body and, and let results kind of bring themselves, which I loved. Um, I think Tim Ferriss, when I picked up his four-hour work week in my gap year, that was like a, that was more of a life moment where I was like, oh, there's other <laughs> options. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I was basically in a gap year going to go to uni the next year and move to melbourne and i was like what like what am i doing um and that was cool because what he made me realize was like basically open my eyes to entrepreneurship and the exact <laughs> same story as me i remember yeah. being on a plane to yeah. a different country when i was yeah eating, and i was like holy shit like yeah. i can actually have agency over my own life literally and to me that was like whoa and i still didn't know how i was going to do it but 
and didn't know it was possible, like how it would be possible. But that book was like, no, you can. Mm -hmm. And I think to me, that was just like, oh, I'm going to figure out like that again. That was like an example of something that resonated with me because I was like, oh, I felt like there was value in chasing things that you intuitively find value in. Mm -hmm. And but before that book, I had no idea how that would like how that would come to fruition. Yeah. It made me realize, look, if you can solve problems that are valuable to you, they'll probably be valuable to other people. And business is a way of like figuring out how you can bridge that gap and get paid for it um, and, you know, make the life that you want to make mm. based on that. So that was very exciting to me. I was like, oh, I want to chase that. And that was start the start of me just being like, whatever I thought was cool, I'm going to dive into it. And, and this whole bodyweight training stuff was a big part of that. You said then, so a little while ago, I think it was in the, a few minutes ago, you mentioned how you have so many deep curiosities and different things to the future and i'm just wondering if we could like maybe explore what some of those are because some of the things that are like trending right now at least in terms of like my social media content is things like the carnivore diet and mm -hmm. um, huberman talks a lot about getting sunlight in the morning mm -hmm. like there's loads and loads of different ones where they're kind of like on the the edge of acceptability where five years ago everything was about veganism and if you ate meat you're gonna die yeah, yeah yeah so is there any kind of areas specifically that you think i'd love to like learn more or explore them and like and try them out yeah i've sort of done a lot of that sort of experimentation like you asked me before is there other things like meditation has actually become a useful tool for me but um in a less you know i think it gets romanticized a lot but it's really just a simple tool that i think everyone can benefit from to an extent and then there's been like lots of other things i've like toyed with like cold exposure and mm. things like that um i think yeah like i think my uh interest for the future are less um and when because when i came to uni i was like all those things like breath work and um cold and like sleep and stuff i was all fascinated by mm. and that's a big part of like psych and neuroscience what drew me into all that um i think now so that there was all that on that side of study mm. now being on the other side i mean i transitioned from very much physiology neuroscience into psych because what i realized was that i found so much more functional um value in psychology because it's looking at like the actual behavior and thought patterns of people and mm. a bit more just like i just found like i was like there is so much here that's sitting there that we understand already that a lot of people aren't using um, and so I, there was a point where I was like, I'm going to become a clinical psychologist and help people with um, mental illness. But that didn't sit right with me either because it's not really the way I want to do things at all. And it's, mm. not, it's not me. And and my interests are more in like functional, like normal living. It's not anywhere near that. It's more like there's a lot of stuff that people who are just living an average life could be uh, improving. So my interest in the future are more to do with the basics of like living and working and relationships you know, and fitness but like how do you leverage them smarter and better and understand your own emotional cues and living relationships and fitness yeah so it's a very holistic approach yeah. to like it's not just exercise and well-being it's like life yeah. itself yeah that you're looking to kind of yeah yeah that's my interest fundamentally on. i think what drew me into psych was like i want to understand what like how do you what's what's a good life what makes a good life yeah. like how do you have good, high well-being because that's basically what i wanted i was like i just mm. want to be really happy and have a fun time um and then, so I guess you can break it down into these basic, you asked before, like, what are those things that we need? What drives us? It's like, well, there's not that much, but you got to get them right. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, relationships, meaningful work, physical health are the basics that you look at. So meaningful relationships, physical work, and like a but career. Mean, yeah. Meaningful like, work. Meaningful work, relationships, and then like physical health, I guess, are okay. the classic three. Um, it's that Maslow's hierarchy of it's needs. like the I don't know what it is it's the it's the basic triad of um, the, yeah. the areas of life improvement I guess but um, yeah my interest is in you know exploring like functional basic everyday how can we do those things better because there's it's more than just what I realize with fitness is like what you've accepted as the status quo is rubbish. There are so many better ways. There's so much better ways of doing things mm. and it's not that hard to tap into. And when you do, you can be getting more results and having a better time doing it. Mm. And so like, you know, I want to just keep exploring those things in the work world and in the relationships world and 
you know, life in general to be like, how can we just get more out of what we've got and have a better time? Mm. I think that a lot of people take a lot of meaning from that because a lot of fitness does just center entirely on yeah. fitness. Yeah. And it doesn't speak to their health and well being in general. And it might say, oh, you get some endorphins from this, but it doesn't yeah. actually teach you yeah. how to approach life in general and how yeah. to like cross pollinate yeah. cross pollinate those rules yeah. Yeah. to different things. I think that'll be super, super useful to people. Um what would you say for advice people just starting their journey in fitness like what what advice would you give them do you think it's best to start them on your program what kind of mindset should they want to go into it with yeah i think like understanding the basics of just you know get stronger um is the is well off they're dreading it they're overweight they're like i have yeah i have no inkling for wanting to do it like how would you convince someone into yeah i mean that giving them a better life yeah I, you've got to want it is the thing um but i think i think the big thing to realize really is that it's so much more achievable than you think mm. and i think what people get confused with is the time it's going to take them overall versus the time it's going to take them like say each week because the time it's going to take you overall it doesn't really matter where you are it's going to take time the body takes time to adapt just like the mind takes time to adapt if you're learning skills or changing anything but it happens. And mm. the beauty of it all is it doesn't take that much time per week. It takes really bugger all. Because as you've seen with us, like 40 minutes a week, that's what I do. And that's what I've done to achieve where I'm at now. It's not like that's just maintenance. Um, and then the diet thing's so simple. And the, and the slower and steady you go, say with weight loss, mm. the better results you get because it's sustainable. So I think the thing to realize is that making insane changes is super doable if you have a clear process that's sustainable that you can stick to. And that's the goal is really that behavior change. And the way you change your behavior is not by going all in and doing some crazy workout routine and some crazy diet that you hate. It's literally by, by figuring out what's going to drive results yeah. and achieving that with as little friction as you can mm. so that there's no reason not to be doing it consistently every single week and loving the process. Because as soon as you've locked into a process you love, time ceases to be an issue because you're enjoying life you make the time for it yeah Yeah. and if you're enjoying it then you're not going to not do it next week because it's like you're looking forward to all that Mm. and then all of a sudden like that time's going to pass regardless of whether you're doing this or not so the like you know you wake up in five years you could either be the same or in a worse position or you could be jacked and the difference will probably be the jacked option if you do like what we do yeah you're probably going to have a better time along the way so how like if we're having a really honest conversation about this how important are aesthetics to you and how important because i think aesthetics are important to everyone just different people have different yeah proclivities to how much yeah. they want to actually admit it yeah um i think the good thing is as i said i wasn't i wouldn't have put in like hours and hours a week in the gym just to look better like mm. we would never have done it uh, and that's why I got bored of it within like a year of strength training. Mm. I think what you got to realize, and this is what I was so stoked to figure out, is that if you get really strong, you, like that's the only way to build muscle. Mm. Um, and then like if you want to then like getting lean, I mean, it's up to you how lean you get or if you even do. But the beauty of getting lean is that you feel better um, and like it's healthier so you like again aesthetics healthy to an extent yeah yeah be and uh, like people might just want to be like 14 percent body fat and that's yeah. fine what are you right now like i don't know nine okay pretty so, fucking lean yeah pretty yeah. lean but you don't have to like a you don't have to get that lean like mm. and like what i get to is what i like and I, I can i've got enough muscle that i feel good here but i think just getting to a point that you're happy with um people think people can kill themselves to get there and again that's not worth it just like spending all the time at the gym to build the muscles not worth it but if you're doing it with a diet that's good it's like modest enough that you're like getting there without feeling crap yeah then it's like well you know what are your downsides to this yeah and then as soon as there are downsides like you get too lean you just stop getting lean yeah <laughs> so like for me it's like it does you know it's worth and and being even say you know 14 percent or something 12 12 percent for a guy is like so doable mm. um provided you've got the muscle mass underneath to be a healthy weight um like that's healthier than being at 20 percent. and above that you're just like you're actually doing detriment to your health so 
So above twenty percent, well, I'm just drinking drinking. randomly numbers, but like we have, like there's issues to being overweight. Yeah, and you know the fact, ever I think everyone would like to look at least a bit athletic. I think everyone would. It's just like how much we'd like to admit it. Mm. For me, it's a a battle off between how much I enjoy food, yeah, and how much I enjoy being ripped. Like I'm in pretty good shape just now, but I'm not like super super ripped. Yeah, and it's because I enjoy having like an yeah. extra bit of food or like that yeah, there yeah. but it's just it's all kind of balance and it's like it's a balance for me it's leaning into that intuition i've never mm. been a person that's counting calories yeah i've just understood like oh if i eat this amount yeah. then I'll i think it's probably weight. the healthiest option yeah yeah just understand what works for me yeah i'm curious how how conscious of your own thoughts are you because you strike me as someone that's just like very aware of anything you do like if you've got something like if you have one morning where you don't do something you're supposed to do or you have like a bad morning mm. you strike me as a person that would like think about that and figure out why that happened yeah i would right in saying that yeah i'm very very conscious of because i'm so interested in it basically because mm. i want to figure out how to feel good and how to like thrive the best i can because i find it's like such a worthwhile pursuit and that's you know what i got into studying and stuff because i think it's interesting and a valuable problem to try and solve right how do you like have a good experience <laughs> um so yeah i'm very conscious of like how i'm feeling and i'm always trying to problem solve basically if i'm like having a bad day or a bad week i'm often trying to pinpoint like okay well maybe and it's all about testing as well it's like what am i like what have i had in my life what like sort of um you know what am i doing mm. what's there or not there that could be influencing the way i feel so yeah i'm very aware of that i like write to my like journal every day and do a lot of note taking and and always thinking and like i'm re- like try and read every day as well non-fiction and always have thoughts going around so i'm quite i think i'm quite self-aware quite a thinker and a self-aware yeah 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 because like i love to test and i love to try and find answers to things because mm. i think nothing's that hard but you just got to figure out what's going on and that takes time i think we do have a tendency to overcomplicate things as yeah. human beings like we make things seem harder than yeah. they are yeah and i think that must be born from some sort of insecurity of feeling like we're not worth something yeah 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 so we make it seem harder and it is so that we don't achieve that goal yeah have you found there to be a mindset shift and the belief that you have that you can achieve the success that you want or have you always just known that you can get to a certain stage um i think it, i think it all grows right and it mm. all comes from like success building on success i think like i think i'm really lucky that i've had parents to push me to go and be like you can you can do this this is possible like mm. if, you, if you're interested and then i think that sort of like builds beliefs early on that are quite difficult to shift if you don't have them so mm. i'm really grateful for like my parents and my upbringing in that sense that i've been encouraged to like have the audacity to go and do things as if when you when you haven't done something you don't believe it's possible because you haven't done it yet yeah and that's what growing up is all about like now you can go do this now you can go do this like mm. step up basically um and but like you know it's like it's still all a process of of um building confidence through doing stuff so with the business like a year ago i wouldn't i wouldn't have had a fraction of the confidence i do now with things and it's it's for me it's been about just taking action and just um learning from that and just mm. being confident enough to like yeah not overcomplicate things and not mm. think that there's some perfect ideal situation and then give up because it's like you're never going to achieve that now it's like i think i've become a lot more present and like present moment focused over the last year by just trying to focus on right now what can i do mm. and not worry so much about like is it good or am i doing the right thing or whatever i'm gonna learn so just like do stuff it's honestly something i've found to be like a common trait across yeah. the people that i've interviewed like for example and I, um, I invited people onto my podcast a week ago and um, two aussie podcasters such and adam and um, they're based up in sydney they run a pretty big tech podcast up there um and i asked them the same question they were like oh when we just started like we just done it like out of the blue and yeah. like we found that to be like following that intuition yeah, to lead yeah. to the most results um and they're like yeah. you just need to have a long-term mindset with yeah. it and that you don't deserve anything you'd like nothing is fair you don't deserve anything yeah whether you see results is going to be a direct result of how much action you take yeah, and that's just true. that's just daily actions compounded is yeah. all that is yeah so it's just it's really interesting with the podcast that you get to speak to so many people mm. within 
different formats like VCs. I spoke to owners of like multi million dollar companies, and they're all just like, don't think about things too much. Just just start doing shit, shit, honestly, and you'll see results. One thing I'm so you've been running the business for about a year now. Am I right in that? Yeah, running the business is an overstatement because we're so early. Mm. Like, yeah, but But you've been 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 looking working working on it for around a year. Yeah. Have you? made conscious action to surround yourself with people of similar mindsets and have you had to cut out anyone that's maybe held you back in that regard um i think i've been lucky enough over like my early years at college and stuff in melbourne to form a group of mates who are really like positive Mm -hmm. um and i've got friends doing like my housemates and my other mates are doing such a range of different things but there's all a very common mindset of like proactivity and self-belief, mm. which I think is awesome because everyone's like has that same mindset and same sort of drive to do things. And it's then it's a mutual support of like the things that we're doing. Mm. So I haven't made since like starting the business. No, um, I think I'm just more being more like as consciously aware and grateful as ever to have those people around me. Okay. Um, which I'm, yeah, I'm pretty stoked on. Yeah, it's pretty good to have yeah. such a, a close knit group yeah. of mates. And I found the same. Like, I've got a bunch of mates from home that are very supportive of the podcast. Yeah. You ever thought about reaching out to other people in the same industry via Twitter or Instagram or like mentors and stuff? I and think, just like putting yourself more within that group of people? Yeah, I think to, at the stage I'm at, I've just been so focused on just taking action and getting to the point where I've got some sort of momentum and mm. being consistent. Um, like I think definitely the more that I think over this year I start to like um, process turn things into a process and get the business going I think definitely I'm gonna do that more Mm. but to this point I've just been so like I just want some basic results I know what I'm gonna do to get them I've just been sort of hunkering down and trying to like get to that point where we're off the ground yeah and you can start running with it yeah low and then definitely I think that's there's a lot of value in forming more of a Mm. specific network just before we finish i want to jump into one last thing that we've talked about briefly you said you write the newsletter yeah you write content and that's something i've done for a while i've not done in a little while now but i used to write a lot of medium a lot of articles how have you found the the change in clarity that you've gained from that have you found there to be like a massive difference what i yeah i think because i always as i said I've, i've written like a crazy amount to myself just like notes note taking and brainstorming and journaling for like probably yeah since 27 16 mm. um since i finished school i think writing consistently that that process has been super valuable because there's like all these ideas i've had since you know mid uni that i've like basically stuff we've been talking about on a high level with the psych applications of psychology that i've been like oh i'd love to talk about all this stuff then I wasn't doing anything about talking about it. And I think now that I'm consistently writing, I've started to see those ideas, you know, integrated with fitness start to come out in a bit more tangible, solid forms. Mm. And that's been really cool because writing and producing content consistently, like that process is the way that you start to see your ideas and things come into real solid form. Mm. So just that discipline of doing it consistently. Yeah, I've gained so much. Just I've seen some of my stuff be out there and be reachable by other people, Mm. which I think is like the whole point. That's what I want to do. You want to spread that message. Yeah, so it's cool to like see it become real. Yeah, I think everyone should write, to be honest, because have you ever read the book Sapiens before? Yeah. So he says within that, the human brains aren't built for this. And you can speak from this from a psychology standpoint. The human brains aren't meant to store the amount of information that we try. They're not file cabinets for it's like a complex fluid system. And you can't just retrieve bits of information. So the only way to actually solidify that is writing down on a piece of paper or journaling or writing online. And it must clarify why you're doing things just via writing these articles. Like you have those eureka moments. You're like, oh, like this is why I really think (laughs) this. And it's funny that you can sit down at a blank piece of paper or like no words typed on a screen and it just makes sense by the end of it yeah, and it's just letting your creative juices sure. flow onto a screen it's a weird experience sometimes i like have yeah that blank thing i'm like what am i gonna write this week and have one idea and yeah. i'm like oh i'll just write a couple hundred words i'll just like flesh out these things and all of a sudden there's two thousand words on the page <laughs> it's 
cool. It's interesting. So I think we're just going to finish up before we do. I yeah. always finish the podcast on the, the same note. So one thing I really like talking about is character. And I ask the guest to really honestly reflect on their own character. Yeah. So from an outside perspective, yeah. from maybe friends or family, what is one thing you think people admire about you the most? And one thing they think you should improve on the most? That's really hard. Um, and this is one you're going to need to take like a really honest reflection for. Yeah. And the the one where you think people admire, you just need to be like, it's, it's always really hard to big yourself up, but there's yeah. obviously things that you think people admire you for. Yeah. Th- I find this a really difficult question. I probably know that. <laughs> for me, like I'll, I'll speak first yeah. and then I can give you a kind of idea. Yeah. So for me, I'd say, I think people admire about me is that I'm ambitious and I try new things. Yeah. And, that's because like I know that about myself is I'm always trying something new. I always want to do something better. Um, and I try kind of get people around me involved in that. Yeah. The thing I think I could do better, definitely communication. I'm not great at that. Sometimes I'll think something in my head and it'll take me three days to text someone back and tell them about it. Yeah. Um, and just like a headstrongness as well. Like once I think my idea's right, I go deaf and can't hear what other people are thinking. Yeah. So that's that's my perspective of being able to answer that question. I like that. I relate to both of those as well. I think sometimes people think I, my communication's a bit off. Um, or like I'm too in my head maybe. I think mm. there's, the strength I would probably be pretty similar. I think people would maybe admire my um, like proactivity and self-belief and mm. like discipline from the outside perspective. To me, it's more like I have to do stuff because I just get too busy. <laughs> And I, I like, you know, the reason why probably both here is because you get so itchy if you're not um, if mm. you're not chasing things that are like big enough and meaningful enough. So yeah, and then you know, and with the fitness and stuff, it's like they say discipline. I say like, just it's just what I need to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was the the other question? Like, what people think would people think you would not criticize, but thing you would need to improve on the most. So it's coming from a loving standpoint of they think, oh, I love this person, but here's what they could improve on the most. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe communication as well. Maybe like. Um, I'm not pretending like I'm like a flawless person. Yeah, no. <laughs> but, but it's uh, a hard it's, question. It's really like hard I always, think. always put it here at the end because it does ask you to really, rawly, honestly reflect. Yeah. Well, the thing I I try and work on, like at the moment, is improving my listening because I think at the like I'm often really in my head, and mm. I can sometimes find it difficult to just slow down. I think we all do to an extent mm. to slow down and probably listen to what other people are saying and since becoming more aware of that i'm more aware of all the times i'm not doing it properly Mm. so i'm not sure if other people recognize that in me or are frustrated by it but it's something that i would really like to be better at um but yeah maybe maybe that's my yeah similar i could could be more coming down to earth and and being here being yeah here. being a bit more kind of conscious in the moment yeah. listening yeah i get that as well i'm, I'm yeah. exactly the same exactly the same yeah so that's just kind of wrapped up i just want to like if, is there anything you'd recommend to people to go to like what's your website and yeah. instagram how did they go about kind of learning more about this yeah so they can go to any of my social medias either tiktok or instagram i'm on jack h woods um, and then from there, there's links to my website, jackhwoods.com. They can read all my weekly letters and sign up for them for free. That's probably the best way to get into this whole philosophy and mm. start doing the training. Um, so, yeah. And it's Jack it's H. all it's all anecdotal, anecdotal evidence, right? It's like, go out, try it for yourself. Literally, literally. Look at the results. <laughs> Watch some of my videos and get an idea of what you, what, what it is. Mm. Try it. And then, yeah, you know, I've had people like comment on my stuff recently. Like, I've been doing this for four weeks and it's like, I'm loving this. Like, mm. making strength gains and stuff. So, it's literally, that's the best way to, to know is to just go do it. And that's hopefully, awesome. there's some of the messages on there resonate. I'm sure they'll have a look on the Instagram and Twitter and just see you absolutely ripped. I'm definitely using you as some clickbait on this, yeah, sure. this podcast. So I just want to say thank you for listening to the episode. To anyone that's got this far and has listened to the entire episode, I'm incredibly privileged that you have done so. Um, I will link all of Jack's social media and all his content 
um, in the show description on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You'll be able to check him out. In terms of the show, I'd love some feedback, um, anything you think is going well, anything you think could be improved upon. Um, yeah, all feedback's appreciated, as well as a follow and a share of the episodes is also incredible for me as well. Um, it really helps me kind of grow this audience as well. In terms of where I see the future of this channel going, um, what I'm kind of figuring out is that I need to come from a place of transparency and authenticity. And for me, I'm still 23. I'm at the stage where I'm still figuring shit out. Um, and I think that's where I want to take the channel is that it's a really honest look at figuring shit out in your 20s. And I want to explore all my areas of interest from a really kind of like naive but raw standpoint. So if I'm interested, which I am, in music and sports and physiology and entrepreneurship, then I just delve into all of them head first and see where that goes. Um, in terms of the episodes releasing this week, we have also the First Press Coffee episode releasing next week, which I'm super excited for, Cobra Company in Melbourne. Um, the 72 Hour Waterfast also releasing this week and a few more kind of secret surprise ones. So yeah, stay tuned, give me feedback. Thanks.